My brother and I have answers to absolutely anything. Your brother and you? Yeah. You don't have a brother. That doesn't matter. Oh, okay. So if I don't know the answer to it, I can say my brother knows that one. Oh. Better yet. No, no. Say it again. Let me get it. <laughs> it's if you don't have children, that you are pretty much like lost and not worthy of anything. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'm. Phrase, I'm not phrasing it right. It's in here somewhere. But then you look at the back in the definitions, and it says spiritual birth. Yeah. Is what they mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, discussion and I had was, okay, I have to physical. Now, are they also You like 18 and 19? First hypothesis. Uh, I don't know. 
Yang Sir and Alder? You mean the Timaeus? Yeah. Where, where did... Pardon? The reading of the Prokhovus is commentary on the Timaeus that's in there, where it says higher, I mean, where it says younger and older, and she's wondering why it doesn't say higher and lower instead of younger. She's wondering if there should be a better term than younger. For higher or lower or younger and older. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why is it no. Yeah, she's wondering why they use no. younger and older. I, I have a cool, good one for you. Change. Change. Change? Change. Change. Either spatially or in time. When it's spatially, it's higher and lower. Right? Yeah, I, I get that. But what does that leave you with? But if it includes both, then there, what's left out? <coughs> what is left out? <coughs> if higher and lower, what would be left out spatially? Well, uh, if you're going with open younger, there's a time frame mm -hmm. that, that creates problems. You know, like, I'd like to know the problems it creates. Time is the biggest problem there is. So you've got, wait a minute, you've got a good one. Right? You got one? A question. Well, um, I have these curious experiences. When I was doing the dream analysis with you on the photograph, and I felt like I understood how it applied, right? Looking at the analogy of the space of mind of the dream, to the states of mind in a past. So then, one day, I took a few minutes to just reflect back on what is what is it that sees, thinks, and hears. Right? And when I did that, like it was like being struck by a piece of concrete or luminous luminous marble. It was like boom. And I saw the same thing, but with, I saw the same thing, I want to say with certainty, mm -hmm. or knowing, mm -hmm. knowing. Mm -hmm. And similarly, when I was, I was out looking at the elements of theology with a friend, and as I got to one about the role of problems, similarly, there was this smaller degree of thunk where I just saw that it was providential, the dream was providential. And it left me with a conclusion, which was that the world of dreams, or dreams, are more real than which people, I've heard people conclude this before, but it's to see it experientially in myself that dreams are more real than everyday life was kind of curious to me. And... <coughs> more intelligible. Also just more powerful. The way How, intelligible, powerful, right, vivid. And more vivid, yeah, and yeah. more... I feel like it was more filling of my psychic space, yes. more resounding. And so it left me wondering. I mean, the question.
partially because I had been puzzling and puzzling about that dream. It came back to me a couple times a day, you know. But I ended up still wondering. Well, and then there was what I told you about, which was that these experiences were like when I tried to get into them, it was like seeing a block of pure white marble, a cube, slide into, space, into a place that was exactly the right size for it. In the wall of the temple building, that outside that would be the pillars, inside is the room where the gods and goddesses, statues are, which suggested another realm, like that of the Tibetans. And so I thought maybe there was a construction up there for a dream work, a temple of dream work going up in the realm of the gods. So the whole thing left me wondering what the nature of reality is. So, do you, uh, do you see? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Do you hear? Um, what's it like when you do that? So, is there something that includes it all? Huh? Louder? Uh, yeah, I know. I was asking you about it. Uh, when you see, do you see the whole thing? Whatever you see, or do you only see a part of whatever you're looking at? Uh, I see both. I see both. Yeah. Oh, both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look here. Describe what that hole is that is seeing or hearing. Or thinking. Is there something that comprehends? Is it something that comprehends each of those things? Yeah. Was the person, is there? Yeah. Is there something that there comprehends the whole of what it is you see? Yes. Or hears? How about things? Thoughts? Same thing? Or? Something is being Yeah. And can you call it, it's the whole? It's yeah, I mean, I wouldn't know. Uh, I wouldn't know where to look. To, where else to look. I mean, it's a, it must be the whole. <laughs> And, and is it immediate? Is yeah. it immediate? Yeah. Quick bang? There's no... Is that right? There's no lag at all. Yeah. Oh, make sure. Is, is it? Okay, cool. okay. Fast? Right, what is, now look here, is, it, is, it, is, it, is there a hole that's comprehending? Um,
Okay? If we can answer that, please. Of course, I can answer that. <laughs> what do you think his answer is? Help him out. Go ahead. Give me your... Right? Can you read it? Go ahead. Read it out loud so I can hear it. Is that right? What, what is it? Take a look. Right, because it's going on all the time, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. What is it? It's so there all the time. Yeah, yeah. The word quickly seems to me to be even not fast enough. Not fast enough, good. Because it's just... Bang. There's no time at all in between the events. Uh, does it follow that whatever it is at that very moment, you comprehend it? So not only do you experience it, but you comprehend what it is you're experiencing? Uh, is that right? Well, comprehending means in some way that you have grasped the whole and you understand what it is. Like, did, have you ever had a sound and you said, oh my gosh, <laughs> boy, did I make a mistake. I thought it was a horse. I thought it was a horse. Yeah. You have done that. Well, yeah. Like yeah, someone snaps their fingers and you say, oh my gosh, I thought that was an elephant. Oh, oh, no, no. No, oh, oh. Well, then immediately you comprehend what it is you experience. Right. Holy, immediately. Yeah. Ah, so then there must be some immediate Experience. Yeah. But yeah. I'm wondering is what it's adding about. mind to it, isn't it? Right. Right? So it's a mindful comprehension that goes on bang, 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 bang all the time. Is that right? Well, the only thing you need to know then is to turn around and see what it is. Uh, right? Yeah, what's that? Just do it for us. Do we want to put a word on it? Uh, yes, don't you? Yes, yes. Don't you? Yes, we both, yes. Go ahead. He's using a lot of body language, so I'm not able to put that on the board yet. Do you need help? Yeah. Go ahead, Nancy, show him up. What, what? What is it that is so mindfully that it comprehends immediately whatever you see, hear, or think, especially think? You don't need to know because you can ask Johnny. Surely, is it good? Yeah. Yeah, answer the question, Julie. Um, the moment? 
What you say? Is mind doing it, or is that what it is? Is something doing it with mind, mindfully? Then it can't be mind. Right? Is mind a function? Is it functioning? Then what is it that's functioning through a mind? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, go ahead. With itself? Through itself. Pardon? Through itself. Did you turn off the fan? Probably. Oh, through uh, itself. Yeah. Did you turn off the fan on that end? Thank you, thank you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Julie. If it is the mind that's functioning through itself, then what is it that immediately knows this? Or comprehends it? The mind. But it's, then it's operating on two levels. See? It must know itself right and must be aware of the fact that it's doing that so you have two minds do you have two minds no mm. Well then, what is it then that is immediately aware of the fact that it know, that it, it knows that that is functioning through itself? Louder. I think the mind does that all that. But then they, now you have three minds. Is mind an activity and also a subject?
is sight a function of something that sees something? Yeah? Oh, then there must be a subject doing it. So then you need an eye that is seeing function its object of seeing. Would you agree? Would you agree? No, not exactly. I think the seer sees with the eye. I, I wanted to know whether you agreed with that. That the eye sees? Yeah. So, What leads you to believe that there must be an organ at work If that's the case, then, is there, now you want to go back to the idea we just had, what is it that's doing all of this? You would say, mind is seeing itself, or mind is functioning through itself, is that right? Look here. just as the eye is functioning through itself. Is that right? Describing the mind functioning, were you not? Yeah. So I put it in these terms. Mm -hmm. Is it not appropriate? Are they not parallel? Well, except the eye needs to have some somebody, something else to see. You see through the eye. The eye doesn't Just as the intellect is intellecting the intelligible. These are all parallel functions. Higher, one's higher than the other, but they're all parallel functions, aren't they? Now we only have one question. Must you not assume there must be some subject that's doing that. Because I have a friend of mine who studied this for some years, and he used to come to Friday night, but he no longer, unfortunately, got in an automobile accident 
and he was never seen after the crash. Oh, by the way, what he used to demonstrate is he could take one of his eyes and take it out and put it on the table and it couldn't see. So the eye doesn't see by itself, for itself, does it? Needs the what? The mind behind it, that is, what? Does the eye see or is it through the eye that it sees? Oh, it's through the eye. Oh. Then what is it that is that operates through the eyes? Right? Then there must be something that operates through. Wait a minute. Is that equally true for all of these? Well, then you need a subject. Is that right? Don't mislead me, because we have guests here, and they don't want to be fooled. Um, yeah. What would you say? I would say yes. Oh, it needs a subject? Yes. Then what is it? What is the whole? What is that hole through which all of this is done? It was the hole. Well, remember? And what is that hole that so quickly after you? What is the hole that sees things and hears? To say it's a whole, what is it that operates wholly in each of these cases? Because that tells us how it functions, doesn't it? Wholly, as a whole. So, what is it? So, how do you spell it? S-E-L-F. Okay, thank you. The spelling is my bad hand there. Okay. S E L F. What follows if that's true? Truly? Well, for one thing, it's very busy. It, it's very busy doing a lot, seeing a lot. Um, it's a cell. I like the idea. Uh, but wait a minute. Does it have any marks when it does that? I don't think so. Marks? Yeah. <laughs> well, where do they get marks? Marks? Well, when you're looking over here, take a look at the over there, go ahead. While you're looking at it, is there any place that you're looking at where you can see the self? Maybe hidden in the corner? I haven't found it yet. No, no, no. So if there is a self operating, it doesn't seem to have any visible marks, does it? Or you would see it. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that right? So the damn thing is invisible. But does all that. The is that right? Is the, self, the self is shy. The self is shy. Yeah. It doesn't want to show itself while it does everything. It's the shyest thing. Right? Well, wait a minute. Uh, let's try one more.
uh, subsidiary question. Second, uh, uh, Miss, Miss, uh, how far can you see? I, I know, but how far is that? She goes to school, which is where you get the best knowledge on these kinds of questions. How far? Uh, sir, could you add more to that? What? You can see forever? For as long as there's light. Oh, so long as... Whatever it is you're looking at has sufficient light, you can see it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, then there's no end to what it may be seen. Merely it depends upon the luminosity of the object. Yes. Is that right? No, you can't see anything. It, com it, it comes to you. Well, you sit there and you just whistle I mean, and it just <laughs> yeah. comes right to you. I don't see stars. Right? Yeah, that's right. I just sit here. And that's called seeing. The distance then, that distance is measurable. Yeah, I guess so. So all light comes at incredible distances to you as you sit there, right, having your cup of coffee. Right? Billions of light years. How about hearing? Yeah, what, what's the limit of hearing? Depends on how loud it is. Yeah, if it's loud enough, you can hear it, right? If you're not hearing it, you have to boost the volume. That's all, but then you can hear it. Well, what, is, what does that mean about seeing and hearing? You really think pretty far. It's unlimited. Is that right? <laughs> then you have a self that can comprehend everything in the universe. There's no limit to what you can see or hear. Is that right? No? Don't mislead me now. A lot of people are making notes. Yeah, all right. It, it has a limitless range. It has a limitless range. Well, wait a minute. Uh, what is the role of... Can you choose what you want to see? Yeah. Can you choose what does that? Is that the will? No? Louder? I think it is. Oh, you would say will. Oh, then you can will, if you have the sufficient will, to see anything. Mm, no. I don't know about this. <laughs> Why, I got it from very good source. <laughs> no, it requires light. Wait a minute. Is there a limit to one's will? You okay. If. The self is without limits. And that's you. Then what keeps you from um, finishing? Well, then you should be able to visit any planet in the galaxy. Is that right? Is that right? Or is there a limitation? The reason we can't do that is because our will is limited. Barbara? Well then, hey, um, no one lacks the ability to understand anything of the universe. 
All they have to do is get the right necessary steps and they'll understand anything. Is that right? Could you even get so you can understand yourself? Mm, oh, that's heavy. Is that right? Oh. Well then, what's the relationship <laughs> between the self and the will? Look at, do we choose? Do we choose the objects? And is that set of objects limited? Great, if it's unlimited, then what follows? Now, I have a good book that has an interesting paragraph on this very thing. But it's not my book. It happens to be, of course, the Balboas. They sneaked it in here. Uh -huh. Well, let's have it. Maybe they'll want it. I, I know. I know one of the Balboas. Okay. Maria. Yeah. May I borrow your book? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's yours? Ah, good, good, good. Changing, right? This is the uh, Hermes Trismegistus that was once considered to be uh, at one with Moses. What's the title here? What's the title? The Way of Hermes. The Way of Hermes? Yeah. Okay, this is uh, Book 11. Okay. I'll read you a couple of paragraphs. And you'll make notes in case that someone wants them. Okay? Yes. And if there's any explanation needed, you'll offer it. Okay. See, that's a volunteer. Good. Thank you. Now, I may misread a couple of things, but you'll have to allow that. Some of the things being said need special attention. Understand what I'm saying. All is within the soul, but not as if lying in a place. For a place is not only a body, but an immovable body. And what lies in place has no motion. Within the self, everything lies in bodiless imagination. Think of the self, which contains all. There is nothing to limit the incorporeal. There's nothing quicker or more powerful or more knowing. It is absolutely without limit, the quickest, the most powerful of all. Hey, consider this yourself. Command yourself to go anywhere. And it will be there quicker than your command. Bid it to go to the ocean. Hey, again, it's there at once. Not as if it had some, not as if it had gone from place to place. It's already there, it can do it immediately. Order it to fly up to heaven. It won't need wings. Nor will anything impede it. Neither fire nor the sun, either ether or whirlwinds, or even other heavenly bodies. But cutting through them all at once, it will soar up to the last body. And if you wish to break through all this, and to contemplate what is beyond, ha, if there's anything beyond the cosmos, it's in your power to do so. For the self has no limits. Wow. Let's do it. <laughs> See what power you have and uh, what speed you possess. You can do all these things. 
and yet God cannot? Reflect on God in this way, as having all within himself as ideas, the entire cosmos, himself, the whole. If you do not make yourself equal to God, you can't understand him, that's all. Like is understood by like. Become like and you know like. Suppose nothing to be impossible for yourself. Consider yourself immortal and be able to understand everything, all the arts, all the sciences, the nature of every living creature. Become higher than all the heights, lower than all the depths. Conceive yourself to be in all places at the same time. Include the earth, the seas, the heaven. Consider, too, that you're not yet born, that you are still within the womb. That you are young, old, and dead. You are not beyond death, but death can't conceive you. Conceive all things at once, times, places, actions, qualities, quantities. Then you can understand God or the soul. Now, I can get copies of this. I can sell it at a considerable cost. Yes. Did he say God cannot do this? No, well, God, that's a rhetorical Like, Do you think God can't do this? Oh, I didn't hear the, I didn't hear no, the no, I, 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 put it, I should okay. put it in. And it wasn't there. Okay, thank you. Uh, by the way, I know someone who's doing a fresh translation of this. Is that Mr. Juan Bubble? Yeah. All right. Did Juan do that? Shall we ask? Please in the process. Oh. Okay. So look here. See, that's the challenge. Hey, their key is just one thing. See? The whole system depends upon one word. Imagination. If you can imagine it perfectly, you're there. The whole system depends upon that one phrase. Therefore, these people that are called uh, Gnostics, that's their training. Right? Visualize, imagine. Right? Imagine. That is a faculty that can grow and develop. And this is where it goes in this system. Right? That's cheap. Cheap, isn't it? You don't need to know anything more. Go do it. Now you're safe. It doesn't cost anything. Right? Pardon? No need for special instance. No need for any advice. You got it all. <laughs> now, this system came into Europe for the first time in 1460. And the de Medici's, they wanted this work more than anything else. Therefore, when it was brought together, pardon me, when it was brought into Florence by a Greek scholar, Pacino translated it before de Medici said, put aside Plato, I want this work, because this work is far more important than all of Plato. And remember, this work is called Hermes, Hermes Thrice Great. The assumption was, here's Moses, and here's Hermes, Thrice Great.
And they started this, and the philosophical path parallels the Hebraic Christian path. And therefore, they're parallel developments, and this was accepted until uh, 1600s when Casabandu, a uh, uh, Calvinist Protestant scholar, looked at the text and said, you can't make that claim because this work can be dated likely at 100 BC, I mean AD. Because it's, anything is okay if it's after zero for some reason. It doesn't compete with Christianity. You can always say it was influenced by Christianity. So therefore, by dating it 100 AD up to 300 AD, that was accepted by all of the greats because St. Augustine in the 4th century AD, he thought that that was the most remarkable philosophical work and when he studied that and Plotinus, that's what got him his enlightenment experience. And instead of continuing with that, he joined the church, they gave him bishop, and he became St. Augustine. But did he, did he drop this stuff? Pardon? Did he drop this yes. stuff? Yes, yes. Well, no, no, see, part of this in this was pseudo Dionysius. And Pseudo Dionysius, in his letters, says that he was present at the crucifixion, the only one, and was the attendant and companion of Paul during Paul's journeys to convert the three, the three great uh, missions that he was on. Therefore, it was assumed that he had a better insight into Jesus than Paul did. And therefore, that belief was carried on until What did Medici think? Hmm? What did Medici think? Medici, what did Medici think in, in this? I mean, it's a, it's a lovely yoga, and it, and it certainly is liberating, and yes. it lends to all sorts of creativity and, and yes. freedom of thought. That's what he saw. And that's what he saw. That's what he saw. Because that legend was there alive from St. Augustine on, that these people had it. And therefore, the first time they saw literally a copy of it in Greek, immediately the Medici said, hey, this has to be translated first before Plato. What is your experience with Hermes? That's a great book. It's a good book, huh? Yeah, it's a great book. Good reading. Now, this is more interesting than the volume I have. I, I've had uh, uh, to work on Hermes, the volume, big, nice, thick volume by, by Scott. But this is up to date, new translation, better support. So, what are you going to do now that you have nothing else to do? You're going to exercise your imagination? Are you not? Yeah, I'm already starting to. <laughs> and I can't stop. Um, so, is Will part of this tradition? And, no, and I stuck that in. Uh, yeah, the, um, I haven't seen that term around too much. The way you're, de you're, you're describing will as uh, action towards some goal. Right. And uh, are you saying that it's uh, always, that this kind of will is qualified by being only will action towards the good? Yes. Therefore, it's linked to news or intellect. I stick in the word will as a meme.
Because, because one has to, if one wants to play this game, one has to direct oneself to do it. What is that that's directing it? You're enlivening your news. You're either going to call it will, or you're going to call it intellect. But, they, some, but is that different from what you just asked? What is it that is doing that? No. No. See, that, that question gets back to this issue. Are these parallels? See? If these are parallels, then you need a subject. Being the subject, that's going to be either soul or self or or Pardon? I was making another point, I think, as well. Uh, so isn't the part of the Hermetic school uh, of the return of the soul to the intellect? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's also in that. Yeah, that's in that same package. No, they don't mention it. They don't mention it? Okay. No. It, it has parallels with Plotinus, right? It's, it's very seldom used in the Gnostic thought. Well, what soul. Is? It's very soul. soul right. Okay. So what is it what is it that they're referring to? The they want to use noose all the time or intellect. That is referring to itself? Yeah. Is it uh, like the legend of Prometheus ties into this? Or? I hope so. Go ahead. I'd like that. Yeah, or was it how he stole the fire from the gods and then uh, well, that's, that's the legend of the English, but then to, to the fire be returned to the gods? Well, that's it. look, you've added an element to the story, so I don't want to hold you back from going further with it. No, but, well, but that's not the legend. No, no. I'm with you. You're suggesting that, thank you, that maybe the dude should have or could have put in the idea of the return. Yeah, through intellect or soul, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So, right, yeah. Uh, soul. You're adding to the story, I like it. Let's encourage him to do more, just keep him. The elbow and come go more glad. <laughs> uh, well, I, I lost my. Ah, yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> huh? yeah, boy, I love the years I haven't been this for a while. This uh, uh, imagination thing works really well. Hmm? This imagination uh, practice works really well. I realized as yeah. you were talking that I've done it before unknowingly and um, it really works. And I, I've, also, I've also heard about a, a study that they've done with athletes who um, they compared two groups of athletes. One of them was told to, in addition to their practice, to also imagine themselves for example, swimmers doing their, um, their form, mm -hmm. and then they compared the two groups, and the group that did the imagination exercise had a far better result. Yes, yes I, many studies show that, that athletes who get out in the field before the game and visualize themselves going through the game turn out to do much more greater greater uh, um, effort and better scoring than without it. Yeah. Oh. Matter of fact, if you ever got involved with that, uh, <clears throat> the healing problem of the South Americans, right, their spontaneous healing, where 
someone comes along and says, I can operate just by sticking my hand in the body and pulling out whatever is infected. And so they have long histories of all kinds of people who have gone through the process. They interviewed the gentleman that was doing this, and he came up with a great statement. He said, it won't work unless I spend at least 30 minutes before visualizing light over the entire building where I will perform my operations. Unless it is inclusive, includes it all, I can't work. But if it's complete, and then I know within it, there's nothing but intelligibility, I can do anything. Yes. Right? A guy. Rather than a daydream. Yes. And the reason I say that is because we've seen at Esalen that in some of your explorations that daydreams often are failures, if not always. Right? So if you have a daydream of yourself standing up in front of the modern society and giving a talk, it's often the, in the case of mine. <laughs> But they can end up with failure, with um, not being able to demonstrate anything. No. For example. Well, so, <clears throat> yes. No, no, that's just. Yes. I was asking if you could speak to that in a way. That contrast. Well, Sarah Wallbank, she was going to be here tonight, but she didn't show up. Uh, she's working on an interesting project at ICU. Ah, really? Yeah. That's that very famous school. And what she's done is gotten perfect, with great care, perfect descriptions of enlightenment states. And that what she does then, she's running her class at over there at ICU, and she gets the class to imagine themselves in that description and to identify with it and her hypothesis is that the ICU is one of the great centers of learning. She expects that all the students will graduate enlightened by maximizing their powers of concentration and imagination. And that's what she told me. Of course, she told me this is in private, so I'm breaking a, uh, secret. a secret. So going back to the image of the doctor, if you imagine a universe in which there's nothing but mind and only mind function, regardless of whether it manifests itself in terms of light or however, yeah. if, if you say, uh, then you impose go to the will or the fantasy or no. which is what Barbara was suggesting, yeah. and you do that within a context where there's nothing but intelligibility of mind, then the, the fantasy would have to... Succeed. Yeah, look, is it not true that we're taught this in schools? Right? Look here. Are you not taught that whatever you see, you experience it in your mind? Yeah. Is that what they teach you in school? They don't! Change schools. Well, I have students that practice right. it all the time because they're always looking at something See? that they can be looking in their mind. Yeah, look here. Then, if this is true, that whatever you see, you really see it in your mind, then all you ever experience is our ideas. There is no physical universe. You've never experienced it. You can't experience it because all you experience is what can reproduce that image in your mind. The difference between the two, you'll never know. Because it's filtered through the eyes and the thinking process. So therefore, everybody's taught the same thing, that all they ever really do is experience ideas. 
which they assume is like the objects they've never experienced. So therefore, assume? it's all mine. What do you mean, if, which they assume is like the object, object they've never experienced? You mean which they assume is like the mind? No one has ever experienced the world as it is. If, if it is true that what you experience, you experience in your mind. If that's true, then you've never experienced the external world. I have a good example. But, but, the, but the conception they have of mind is a perfect mind. So they allow the chaos of the world to appear as chaos in their mind. That's all it is. And if they would assume that there's only order, then anything that they see from now on would be perfect. That's all. Yeah, I get it. I, you know, that brought up something somebody said that you can only, uh, like you can only say one word at one time. You can only think one thought at one time. So, I want to talk to my sister. Let's all think positive. That what? That's all being positive. Yeah. Okay, I have a great example. In my class... I ah, know, here it is. I, I she teaches, by the way, at ICU. You know, I, I show that these five words. Go ahead, go ahead. Paris in the spring, right? Go ahead. Only it says Paris in the, the spring. It's got the repeat. And, and um, so then that comes down. And I asked the students, okay, how many of you saw the two those? And out of a class of 40, only two people saw the two those. Everybody else saw what they thought it should say, which was Paris in the spring. So clearly they are not seeing what's on the, what's in front of them. They're seeing what's up here. No. Which is just the placebo effect. Oh. They see what they expect to see. Yeah. Oh. And, that, and that's how Trump got elected. Yeah. Are you... The, the, are you good? The, the Trump. What? So are you going to tell us how that relates to the imagining exercise? If it's all in your mind, why not focus on it? Among the objects, why not focus on the most intelligible? And if you focus on the most intelligible, then you're experiencing it to the degree in which your imagination allows you to coincide with the object. Are you trying to trick and, and let me tell you, this is Sarah Wallbank, you know. She was, you know, very intelligent girl. That's why they hired her there. There are two trees. The one, in, the one you experience in your head and the origin of the tree, which could itself be a higher idea. But experience it then. And if you, uh, when she does that, do make notes about what she experiences so we can talk about it. Okay. <laughs> According to this model, imagination is just getting you to do what's obvious, that is, to spend some time on choosing some object. I have a friend of mine, Harry Jovidovich McGee, and he's focused on one object and he's become a millionaire. He focuses on money all the time. Therefore, that's all he sees, that's all he thinks about, right? Day and night, 
looks for opportunities always to make a buck. So he's actively imagining himself being wealthy and wise. He's only, by the way, gained one, but not the other. Um, it, it struck me that there's other differences between the fantasy and the practice of the athletes. The fantasy is something that is, is going to sleep, right? And it, and it has to do with a self-image of yourself that you want to bring about. And um, and you you wake up when you when that self-image fails of the reality. It doesn't, it's not an actor. Well, I, I realized that the description of the athlete's practice was to visualize the stroke or the playing of the game, whereas often the fantasies are fantasies of, or daydreams mm -hmm. are daydreams of some triumph, not the method, right? So that's, so I don't know if that's a real difference. That's no, no, that's very that. important. You have to know the subject. And you, your, your visualization is a process. That's right. Your precise steps right. rather than, okay, gotcha. And you're willing to go over it again and again. And again and again. Mm -hmm. Like my friend, Harry Jovidovich McGee. Yes. All I think about is serving. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that will make me a better server. But how do you serve? Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that the problem? Uh, I mean... If you want to be better, what do you have to do? You have to have an idea of what it is to be better. Absolutely. Is that right? Yeah. I heard someone say absolutely. Wouldn't you want to know what they saw at that moment when they said absolutely? Well, I was thinking about some studies I undertook, mm -hmm. undertaken lately, and they, um, the more often I over them, and specifically the more often, it's, I was actually talking to Julie over a cup of coffee, and realized that when I reflect, um, I've often thought of myself as a person who can't reflect without notes. So, but here I was, I was kicking back on my way to sleep going, you know that question, I just don't get it. And I started pulling together all the pieces, and realizing that two things happened, I had questions and I had some answers. Both of those things I hadn't realized, but I was able to, just with what I could recall of the studies I had undertaken, because I was practicing them mm -hmm. again and again, and I had been putting myself down for practicing them again and again. But in fact, that made me more literate, and therefore I was agreeing that you do need to have a precise method and steps in mind, that those are the things that you're reversing. No, and they're not present in a daydream. They're not present in a daydream, exactly. Because we always skip the process leading us to the goal. Right. That's right. Hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, you see, <clears throat> to be quite, quite fair about it, the problem with daydreams is that there are five kinds of, of so-called daydreams, but uh, every daydream starts off with an image of yourself. If that is not chosen with care, representing your higher self or the most ideal self, this will be therefore diminished in value and importance. And therefore, in the daydream, you'll be playing out the limitations of your idea of the self, which is why at the end of every one of these, it's a failure. 
That's either true or it's not true. Find out. I think that uh, what you were talking about, the athletes that are going for both of you, they train, go through motions or they train before they, they perform. I think that is actually a skill in itself, is how to uh, daydream, you know, and, and, and what separates the, the more successful athletes from the other is their ability to be able to picture what they're trying to achieve to a higher level. I, yeah. I used to ski... Uh, yeah, the more precision you yeah. put in your daydream, yeah. you're yeah. planning and yeah. not daydreaming. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's not a, it's not that's a, that's a difference. That's a difference, yeah. Right. Like a practice. But, but for that to work, for that to work, wouldn't you also need uh, a coach or some real? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't. You, you would have to have an idea of what the, the best. Um, the perfect movement, right? Yeah. Right. And, and right. So, so, as, as it, so as an athlete, you have that idea, right? Like well, certain. Athletes, they're doing something wrong that they can't see themselves, which is why they need a coach to, to help them see what they are not doing. True. Right. True. So, so that's rooted in some kind of activity. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Also, they do that with basketball. They have people imagine dribbling and shooting baskets, and they actually get physiological. Of the muscles. And the muscles actually are getting a workout just in imagining sure. their What is studying? What is what? What is studying? Studying. Working out. What are you doing when you're studying something? Embracing. You're trying to convince yourself that you know. The greatest precision and the choice of your objects will help your meditation or imagination. And that's why the work of Sarah Wallbank is so important. I'm still not convinced. No. Okay. Time to quit. Right? We just had a little fun. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, got dreaming.